first ever loom lesson. I have no idea really how it's going to go. It could go really well. It could go really badly. Also, if at any point my cat joins in the video, don't be too surprised. She seems to love being on camera. Okay, so our lesson today is on aerobic respiration. It's the first topic of B9 and it relates quite closely to photosynthesis and cells. You will see, as you would in any other lesson, we've got our do now at the top. What I'd like you to do now is to pause the video, complete the do now, and then press play once you are done. Thank you. Okay, so on to our second slide. Hopefully you finished the do now questions by now. Here are your answers. For number one, you've got the chloroplast is the site of photosynthesis. It contains chlorophyll. What I want you to be thinking about right now is what the chlorophyll do. What is the function of the chlorophyll? Hopefully you remembered that their function is to absorb sunlight. I won't talk you through all of the answers because some are quite self-explanatory. Instead, I will jump to six. So this was about the difference differences between arteries and veins. There's more differences than what I've shown, but I'm going to talk you through them now. So you could have arteries normally carry oxygenated blood, whereas veins carry deoxygenated blood. Veins have valves, whereas arteries do not contain valves. Veins have a larger, wider lumen. Arteries have a smaller lumen. Arteries have thick muscular walls, whereas veins have thinner muscular walls. Arteries take blood away from the heart. Veins take blood towards the heart. OK, on to the next one, foxglove. So I have another question for you here as well. I've asked you about digitalis. Now, if I said aspirin, what word would you be thinking about? Yep, that's right. Willow tree bark. Finally, we've got amylase. Amylase is an enzyme, works in the small intestine, breaks down starch into glucose. You also need to know your other two enzymes, protease and lipase. OK, if you need to finish marking, please pause now. So on to the lesson. We're looking at aerobic respiration. Respiration should not be confused with breathing. Respiration is a process that happens in your mitochondria of your cells to release energy. Aerobic means uses oxygen. That AER means kind of oxygen. You used to have aeronauts, which were kind of like hot air balloon pipes. They fly through the air. The chocolate aero, great chocolate, contains bubbles of air. That air means oxygen. So aerobic uses oxygen. Obviously, it's going to be quite hard to think pear share at this time. OK, so at the top, we have a definition of respiration or aerobic respiration. You've then got in the blue box, the light blue box, the word equation for respiration and the balanced symbol equation. I'd like you to pause the video and get both of these down now, please. OK, so you can probably notice or hopefully you have noticed that there is a similarity between this equation and that of photosynthesis. Respiration and photosynthesis are the flipped versions of each other. So if you were to flip this around and start as carbon dioxide plus water, arrow glucose plus oxygen, you would have photosynthesis. This makes it a lot easier to remember the two separate equations. OK, there are four questions here I want you to have a go at now. Please, could you pause the video and work through these four questions? Thank you. OK, 
Okay, please mark. So for the first one, oxygen enters our body through the lungs. It then moves into our red blood cells. It will bind with a protein known as hemoglobin. It will travel through our arteries to our muscle cells. Okay, in terms of glucose, obviously you get it from our food. It will be digested in the small intestine. An enzyme known as amylase will break down that starch into glucose. It will then travel through the blood plasma to get to our muscle cells. So you can notice here that oxygen travels via red blood cells. Glucose travels via the blood plasma. These are two of the four components of blood. Okay, the enzyme that breaks down starch, the enzyme that produces glucose is amylase. For carbon dioxide, it will move from our muscle cells into our veins. It will then travel through the blood plasma again, through the blood plasma in the veins, through the blood plasma in the veins, sorry. It will travel to the lungs and then be exhaled. Okay, so respiration. It is an exothermic reaction. That's going to be really quite important and it is worth noting down. Because it's an exothermic reaction, that means it transfers energy to the surroundings, to the environment. You'll notice that I will use the term, it releases energy. Both of them are completely and utterly fine, but I will use it releases energy most often. So respiration is exothermic, meaning it releases energy. Respiration happens in the mitochondria. It says mitochondria now, because that's a single mitochondria, which is plural. So you must know that aerobic respiration happens in the mitochondria. That is very important. Please record that now if necessary. You then have a bit of information about other areas of a cell. For example, something we're going to look at later, not this lesson, you've got the cytoplasm. This is where anaerobic respiration takes place. Anaerobic, whereas aerobic takes place in the mitochondria. Okay, a bit more about this word exothermic. Exothermic, if you break it down, means outside to heat. So it releases that energy. That is shown as a temperature increase, as a temperature increase. Because that kind of term firm means temperature. For example, thermometer, temperature, even here, thermostat. Exo means outside. So exterior, exotic, outside the ordinary. Insects have an exoskeleton. Their skeleton is found on the outside. Okay, you've then got endothermic. Endothermic. Respiration is exothermic, whereas photosynthesis is endothermic. It takes energy in. It has to absorb energy from the surroundings. So photosynthesis absorbs that energy energy from the sun, it makes it endothermic. Humans have an endoskeleton because our skeleton is inside. Okay, respiration is controlled by enzymes and takes place in the mitochondria. Mitochondria have a folded inner membrane. Why? This is one of those really common adaptations. A lot of cells have it. Um, a lot of large organ systems have this adaptation. It is to provide a large surface area. Other cells with this adaptation are red blood cells, root hair cells. The alveoli in the lungs provide it with a large surface area. Okay. There are seven questions here. I'd like you to work through them now, please. If you pause the video and work through, that'd be grand. Thank you. OK, 
Okay, so here are your answers. Oh, sorry, aerobic means use oxygen. You've then got the word equation for aerobic respiration. You've then got the way to remember the two of them. They're the flipped version of each other. You've then got the balanced, the balanced symbol equation for aerobic respiration. You've got your C6H12O6, which is glucose, made up of six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. You then flip that round to make the balanced symbol equation for photosynthesis. Exothermic means releases energy. Okay, why do our muscles need lots of mitochondria? Well, they've got to release lots of energy. Our muscles require energy to contract. So when you've got a lot of muscles like myself, you need a lot of mitochondria. All right, we're gonna look at a six marker now. I want you to compare aerobic respiration and photosynthesis. I put a few hints there for you to think about. These are things that you can talk about in your answer. It's a six marker and it is a compare question. You should know how to answer a compare question by now. In a compare question, you look at similarities and differences. Similarities and differences. So for example, for example, a similarity could be both aerobic respiration and photosynthesis occur in plants. A difference could be aerobic respiration occurs in the mitochondria, whereas photosynthesis occurs in the chloroplast. I've put the two equations there to help you. If you'd like to pause the video now and complete the six marker. Thank you. Okay, here's just an idea of some of the things you could have written. It's not exhaustive, and actually you could have a lot more than that. If you'd like to use this to mark your work, please. Pause if necessary. Okay, so on to our last bit now. Why do we need respiration? Well, we're gonna start by looking at our cells. Our cells need respiration, because that gives them the energy to build these large molecules from smaller molecules. For example, we can build protein from amino acids. We could build starch, or, or plants in fact build starch, from glucose. We could use it to break down large molecules into smaller ones. So this happens in digestion. We use that energy to break down our starch molecules into glucose our fat molecules into free fatty acids and glycerol. Okay, we are animals. Sorry, my cat's attacking something. We are animals and therefore we need energy from respiration to make our muscles contract. We need this every time that we move. Our muscles are contracting all the time. Our heart is beating, our stomach is churning our food, our small intestine is kind of pulsing to pass that food along through our digestive system. So we need energy to make our muscles contract. Mammals and birds also require this energy from respiration to maintain a constant internal body temperature. So we can modulate, we can change our internal body temperature based on conditions around us. When it's a lovely sunny day, we might um, start to sweat to reduce our temperature. On a cold day, we might shiver. That involves using uh, mitochondria and respiration to make our muscles contract and relax rapidly. That releases kind of some energy to warm us up. Plants. So plants need energy to carry out a process known as active transport is active it needs energy it moves some things such as nitrates from the soil into the root hair cells but it's active it needs energy they also use energy to build their amino acids so they combine glucose and nitrates together 
to make amino acids, which is then used to build proteins. This is one of the uses of glucose that we've looked at. There are other uses of glucose, and I have put crops here to try and remind you, but I'll take you through them anyway. So the first use of glucose, the C from crops. crops. Glucose is used to make cellulose. That will also require energy from respiration. R, glucose is used in respiration. O, glucose is made into oils and lipids to store in seeds. The P, that's the one on the screen. Glucose is combined with nitrates to make amino acids to then build into protein. Finally, so S, glucose is converted into starch. This will require energy from aerobic respiration. Okay, once again, a set of questions here, please. Pause the video and work through them. Okay, on to the answers. Okay, the answers here, if you'd like to pause the video for a moment and correct, if necessary, tick, cross, whatever you've got to do. All right, on to the last slide. Okay, obviously this is the first time that I've done this. Some parts I think have gone well, some parts could have gone better. But I need your feedback on this. I need you to let me know what you felt about it. Did it allow you to learn? Was it worthwhile? Was it worse than a booklet? Was it better than a booklet? Was it too fast? Was it too confusing? What didn't work well? What did work well? Please be honest and just get back to me about this because that way you can look at doing it again, but doing it better. This won't be perfect the first time. Okay, uh, thank you for listening. This has been an odd experience for me. I hope you have a lovely continued isolation. Stay safe and look after yourselves. Thank you. Goodbye.